Good morning, church. God is good. And all the times. Thank you so much. The book is John chapter 20. Reading verses 14 through to 18. Verse 14, the Bible reads, And when she had said, and when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Verse 15, Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seeketh thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. 16. Jesus saith unto her, Mary, she turned herself and saith unto him, Rabon, which is to say, Master. 17. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father, to my God and your God. 18. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. May God bless his words. Amen. Shall we just pray together? Heavenly Father, we are listening. We are anxiously waiting. Speak to us through the power of the Holy Spirit. We seek for the meaning, for the interpretation, for the application of your words. This we ask and pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. We want to talk about this special woman, one of the disciples, one who walked closer to Jesus Christ, and yet those who were capturing the information could not even include her as among the disciples that were chosen by him. She had a privilege to save Jesus during the feast in the house of Simon. And also she had a privilege to witness the death of Jesus Christ right there at the cross. As a matter of fact, John was there she was also there with other women. She had also a privilege early in the morning when Jesus resurrected, she was there. But I want us to follow her history. She joins the disciples halfway the ministry of Jesus. And at her turning point, Jesus drove seven demons out of her. And may I be quick to suggest that this is her turning point. You know, many of us, we, we come into the faith with things. She left seven demons in the world, but alas, Men of us, we have come with demons in the faith. 
We have come with our past life into the faith. I know. Maybe it may be wrong to suggest that there are people who still smoke. In the church, drinking. Mary leaves seven demons and comes to Jesus Christ. You see, when she comes to Jesus Christ, she walks with Jesus. As a matter of fact, she began to sponsor the ministry of Jesus Christ with other women in the background. And also we come into contact with her when Simon invited Jesus. We remember Simon the leper, when he was healed, he wants to show gratitude to Jesus is invited in the house and there are so many people seated there. She comes secretly, she begins to weep and the tears are falling on, upon Jesus. She reached out with her hair and wiped the tears. She broke the carabash. And that's where we, 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 we again get information. And I know that many preachers and authors, they've associated Mary Magdalene with that woman who was caught in the very act of adultery, but far from it. She is not the one. She is not even the prostitute. I was doing my research in the Bible. I've never come across that information that Mary Magdalene was a prostitute. And I want to pose that challenge that if you have information you can share with me. I add some notes to my, to my sermon. Uh, but this is the woman now when Jesus is dying on the cross. She is there. And she goes back to prepare the ornament. And before she could even take off to go to the, to the grave, uh, we are in the hours of the Sabbath and so she did not go. She rested on Sabbath. Uh, but the Bible says, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Mary with other women are coming to the grave and they are thinking, who will remove the rock for us? As they approach the grave, they realize the, the stone is rolled away. And she never even went inside. She jumps to conclusion that they've stolen the body of Jesus. And she turns going to the village. And she finds Peter and the disciple Jesus loved so much. She tells them they have stolen the body of the master. And Peter and the disciple... Uh, the other disciple, they come to the grave. The Bible says the younger one outlain Peter. And when he came to the grave, Peter arrived and straight away he went in the grave. Mary never went in the grave. May I suggest this morning that our God is gracious. He will never allow some of us to have the experience of the empty grave. He will never allow that. He weighs our faith. And he sees beyond what we are not able to see. There are people that, whose faith cannot navigate through temptation and hardship. God will not allow them to have the empty grave experience. And so, Peter is in the grave and John enters. The Bible in verse 7 of chapter 20 says, They found the clothes put there, 
and the nap king folded nicely. And the Bible says, when John saw the napkins, he believed. He believed. But when they came out of the grave, he never shared his belief with anyone. He went quietly home. Peter, in his mind, they have stolen the body of the master. John, in his mind, my savior has resurrected. And he does not share that good news. There are many of us here who are seated on the truth. We never get to share with others. We are quiet when the world is lavaging with sin. We are quiet when people are brutalized, quiet to the core. Just like John never shared the good news. And Mary is there. And when she decides to peep into the grave, my Bible says there were two angels in the grave. She never saw the grave empty. But they, they, by the time she decided to see through, there were angels. And they ask her, woman, what are you looking for? Says they've stolen the body of my master. She is telling hellish to the angels. They have stolen the body of my master. And the Bible says she turned. And when she turned, uh, there was a man well corrected, standing firm, well corrected and humble, and asked the same question, woman, whom do you seek? She tells Jesus, they've stolen the body of my master. Supposing Jesus was a gardener. Please tell me where you've taken the body. I'll go and get it. I don't know who Jesus is to you. To Mary, she, he was a gardener. I don't know who Jesus is to you. To some of us, he is just the healer. He is the comforter. He is the consoler. He is the provider. And is nothing less of the savior. You see, people come to church for different reasons. I, I came to church for food. Food. You know, the family that was keeping me, they would take all the pots to church on Sabbath. I was not an Adventist. So I would come around this time so that I have my, my share in the Adventist pot. And one day they had Lord's Supper. They delayed to come out. I entered into the church. There was a powerful preacher. Preached. I followed the port, but I met the Savior. Men of us, we follow Jesus for different reasons. Some for relationships. Some for food. Some for chilling. Some for family religion. I was born in Adventist family. My father is an elder. My father is a pastor. I don't want to let him down. I'll go to church for his sake. Supposing he's a gardener. And so Jesus realized Mary is mixed up. She cannot go. Before I deal with her. And so Jesus will call me. Mary by the name. Mary. You know some of us. Jesus must call us by our name. It's too much of. Believing in the. God of the Adventists. The communal God. He is never your God. But our God. When Jesus says Mary, he narrows down the relationship between her and him. He is no longer 
uh, the savior of the disciples, but the savior of Mary. So Mary realizes Jesus, or oh, it's my savior. Then Jesus tells Mary, don't touch me. I have not yet presented myself to my father. Your father, your God, my God. He personalizes now Jesus. Jesus extends a personal relationship to Mary. And at that point, Mary realizes, my Savior has risen. And so Jesus tells her, go, go, go and tell my disciples, go, it's now the former demon possessed. Oh my God. It's now the former prostitutes coming to the disciples. He has listened. He has listened. The one who joined the faith in the middle of the ministry of Jesus. Yet those who started with him are in the upper room in Jerusalem. Where were the leaders? Where were the courage? Where were the church clerks that it took a former demon possessed to carry such an important message of the resurrection of Jesus? The salvation of man at the hand of a former, former demon possessed. They say she was a prostitute. Let's suppose she was a prostitute. A prostitute? Calling the resurrection of Jesus, the salvation of man, and bringing it to the disciples, my brother, my sister, when you meet the glorified Jesus, there is no way you can keep quiet. Many of us, we need to meet the glorified Jesus. We met the Jesus before the cross. And no wonder we are so called. No wonder we cannot go. When you meet Jesus, glorified, you don't care about your reputation. You don't care what the world will say. You will say, yes, I was a drunkard, but I met the man of the cross. Yes, I was a prostitute, but I met the man of the cross. Let me tell you, child of God, that not as yet, you see, if you don't want to preach the word, you will preach and you will preach it anyway. Sometimes God may allow sickness. Sometimes God can even allow you to die and in your death you preach the word. You will die and the coffin will be lying here. And those who have never been in the church, they will come on that day and they will be forced to enter it is not an excuse, my brother, my sister. The fact that you are not preaching, it is not as yet. Sometimes you may preach the word whilst you are sleeping there hopeless and helpless. So Mary preached the word. Before I end my message, I like watching football. And I have seen as the game is on, and if the game is going, not going to the favor of the, the other coach, he will bring a substitute. And when a substitute is coming in, he will not just go from the bench into the pitch. There is some warming up. Warming up, my brother, my sister. Warming up, warming up, warming up. Until the temperature raises, it catches up with those who are in the game. I want to suggest to you that there are many people who are warming out out there. Warming up, drinking, they are warming up. Smoking, they are warming up. In adultery, they are warming up. Stealing, they are warming up. In prison, they are warming up. They will come. They will come. They will come and finish the gospel. They will come. I don't know, maybe I'm warming up this puppet. There you will come. I don't know whether you are singing in the choir. Maybe you are warming up. There you will come. 
I don't know where you are. You are chairing the church board. Maybe you are warming up. They are coming and they will come to finish the gospel. The one who accomplished the salvation of mankind to the disciples was a late comer in the church. Possessed by demons. Where were the perfect ones? No wonder Jesus says, I, do not, I did not come for the righteous, but I came for sinners. And my church hates sinners, yet the Savior loves sinners. Oh, I wish I could preach this morning. Jesus is in the business of saving mankind, and he will do it anyway. He will raise the unthinkable the untouchable, those that we look down upon, they will rise. One time Jesus is entering into the temple and they are not singing the praises. They are not singing the Hosanna. He says, I can raise the stones. Jesus will raise the stones and the work will be completed. Brothers and sisters, it's time. It's about time that you and I, we meet the glorified Jesus. When you meet him, you have a story to tell. He has risen. Our song is that Jesus saves and he saves to the uttermost. Extend that kingdom to your friend, your siblings, your closest friends. Jesus is looking for someone. Is there someone who is saying, I have heard, but I'm not a preacher. I have heard, but I'm not a singer. But the Lord can use me. I am ready and willing to go. Despite my reputation being on the balance, I don't care what people who say, I will go anywhere. Is there such a one? If you are there, I will ask you to stand with me as we pray, as we ask the Lord to collapse the Holy Spirit upon each one of us that we can go on his errand. It doesn't matter your back. Ground. It doesn't matter whether you are educated or not, whether you are rich or not, whether you are dark or light. Jesus is looking for someone. Are you such a one? If you are, stand with me as we pray. We are praying. Our gracious, loving Father, Again, you've spoken to us words of life, words of encouragement, words of exaltation, that you are willing, you are ready, you are looking for someone. It doesn't matter the past. It doesn't matter Heavenly Father. The CV, the accolades, that such a one may have. So you invite the unqualified and you qualify them for mission. Father, we are here today. We know we are not qualified. We know we have little experience. We know our theology may not be eloquent. We know we may not be consistent in the language. And yet we are willing, Father. I pray that may you collapse the Holy Spirit upon such a one. May you give them what to say. They can even say, Jesus loves you. And that is enough. Father, may our lifestyles be a message to this world. May the world know that you will come. Father, for you said if I be lifted up, then I will draw all men unto myself. Father, help us to lift the banner high.
to lift your name high that the whole world may be attracted to you. Thank you, Lord, that you can use even those that are the rejects. You can use even those that society look down upon, such the likes of Mary Magadala. There are many, and yet you can still use them and avoid certain experiences that can injure their faith. Thank you, Lord, for we pray and ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. come to the end of the service.